objectives that we have set for ourselves as an administration. That is self-sufficiency in rice by 28, at the end of 2018. The plan also covers anti-corruption and transparency, public safety and security, population growth management, social inclusion and others. But some areas are regarded as critical execution imperatives. One, agriculture and food security. That is a critical execution imperative. We must attain food security and we must grow rapidly our agricultural sector. It provides jobs for many of our people. Secondly, energy, particularly power and petroleum self-sufficiency. We have no reason whatsoever to be importing petroleum products. We must set ourselves the target of being self-sufficient in petroleum products. Then three, small businesses and industrialization. These are key. And finally, we must stabilize the macroeconomic environment. The summation of the plan involved top economists, but many still express fear of non-implementation. There will be a major emphasis on implementation and monitoring and evaluation of this plan. We intend to set up a specially staffed delivery unit to drive implementation of the plan. There is no uh, what you might call um, money implementation or the execution and the monitoring of the execution, meaning that uh, we should set ourselves some KPIs and some times, uh, timelines, uh, meaning here in three months from now we have to do a check, six months from now we have to do a check, nine months from now we have to do a check. So those check marks and what are expected and what kind of outcomes are expected from not just the economy but from all the segments of the economy that had been highlighted in the document need to be uh, s clearly spelt out now so that we all can hold our government responsible. The target of achieving 7% growth by 2020 is another area which the Nigeria Economic Summit is not very sure of. It's a tough call. 7% um, growth is something that if all engines are on fire, if we do certain things, we could clearly articulate it. Not with the current scheme of things. You have to do certain things. You have to be creative. We have to think outside of the box. Um, those sort of things, are, the details of those sort of things are lacking in the document. Uh, but I do believe that this is a listening government, and I do very strongly believe that this government, if we give them the right help and support, they would be able to listen and take it and run with it. Economists also relate to the success of the plan to currency and foreign exchange policies. And most of the key issues you're talking about, really, it's all of this is going to boil down to how well you manage your currency. And um, if you manage your currency well, the levers of monetary, uh, monetary policy will not work if your the linkages driven by fiscal policies are not right. All of what we do in this country takes place to what's called trade and exchange. Whether you're exchanging services, whether you're exchanging words, whether you're playing music, it's called trade and exchange. And the currency that makes the show that trade and exchange takes place is called our money. Now that money which we use to drive all of these things has about three dimensions. Because first of all, it must store value. Otherwise, no one will want to keep it. It won't be a store of value, and then we we'll want someone, something else. The second one is that the pricing of credit, the price you pay for interest rates to develop to do real sector work. If what you get from it doesn't um, bring a return to you, then work won't pay. You can't do that. The final part of it is a carefully negotiated 
purchasing power parity, and that's basically on a, on a, on a bilateral basis, virtually every other country. But if you don't do the first two part, the two parts well, you're going to crowd out and put the third part under pressure, which is what you have right now. It means your um, the game of the foreign exchange is more like uh, poker. It's um, it's uh, it, it, it's indefinite and uh, it's a bit of a jungle because I know there are very many exchange rates that are in play. And if you don't understand the markets, understand the way money plays, you might not be able to put the framework that will make that work effectively. The talk of diversification is still a major part of the economic recovery plan for the year placing industrialists in the middle of activities and they have their demands from the government. They should balance their fiscal and monetary policy. Uh, try and find a solution to the current monetary po problems that we're having, especially the FX. I, I think there's a bit of a, a good sign to that this year with uh, oil prices going up a bit and we see the direction uh, in terms of stability of security, in terms of the not uh, the northwest, uh, northeast, and also in the south-south. So if that remains stable, then I think they should just balance the policy, make available a bit more on the FX side, uh, because we've had, I think, the worst year ever last year. I think everybody actually, we're, we're thanking God that it's over. And uh, we're looking forward to 2017, where that they, they actually would have more synergy between themselves, uh, between the fiscal policy and the monetary policy this year than they've ever done, actually. Import duty element protection of certain industries or certain businesses is, is essential because every economy has to actually find a way of protecting its own ingrown businesses. That's fine. Now, they're also balancing. Now, we're, we're in a recession and we're turning back from recession. Now, one thing I'll see is I would want to see in 2017, especially for the industrial sector or for the growth of other sectors, is for us to reverse this high interest rate. You cannot drive yourself out of recession if you do not work on an expansionary program. Now, expansionary does not happen when you are actually limiting liquidity. Now, so we have high interest rates in a situation where we have negative growth, it's not helping the situation. It's making it difficult for any industry to borrow, and the liquidity in the system is also very minimal. So in very, we are very in an illiquid situation in Nigeria today, and that does not help the situation of the businesses. So the businesses are struggling, one, for working capital, not to talk of capital expenditure. It's, you're struggling on all sides. <music>